Good morning and welcome to our YouTube channel and um, happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there and uh, we thank God for you and um, at this time it is very important for us to remember uh, those who have lost um, any kind of family members during this pandemic and our thoughts and prayers are with um, any family members who are suffering or mourning at this time and so um, I hope that this message as always is an encouragement to the people who watch it and may the Lord uh, uplift you and may you know his presence uh, here with us this morning. Let me share a um, Celtic prayer with you um, as we open up together and um, it begins talking about God as Father. But This is known as the Ocean Prayer and you will understand why I've chosen this prayer um, when we have our reading next. It says, God the Father, all-powerful, all-loving, Jesus, the Son of tears and sorrow, with thy coexistence of Holy Spirit, the Three One, ever-living, ever-mighty, everlasting, who brought the children of Israel through the Red Sea, and Jonah to the land from the belly of a great creature of the ocean, who brought Paul and his companions in the ship, from the torment of the sea, from the sorrow of the waves, from the great gale, from the heavy storm, protect us and shield and sanctify us. Be seated, O King of the elements, at our helm, and lead us in peace to the end of our journey. Amen. The reading I've chosen to share with you today is quite a short one. It's a very well-known story, but it comes from Matthew um, chapter 8, verses 23 to 27, which is um, Jesus calms the storm. And that says, Then he got into the boat, and his disciples followed him. Suddenly a furious storm came up on the lake, so that the waves swept over the boat. But Jesus was sleeping. The disciples went and woke him, saying, Lord, save us, we're going to drown. He replied, You of little faith, why are you so afraid? And he got up and rebuked the winds and the waves, and it was completely calm. The men were amazed and asked, What kind of man is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. May the Lord give us understanding of his word now as we uh, look into it and see how this may speak to us in this uh, current pandemic situation. Well, the title of our sermon today is The Perfect Storm. That's a, a common phrase you may have heard. There's even a movie called The Perfect Storm. And it basically, I found a very helpful definition from the internet. And it basically means this, the phrase itself. A perfect storm is a rare combination of events or circumstances creating an unusual bad situation. Let us uh, cast our minds back now to um, what some would regard as the beginning of coronavirus on December 31st. However, there, are, there is also some a belief that it could have been before that as well. But I was thinking about it the other day, and if we think about the way this virus came into existence it really was a perfect storm you know the conditions were just right for this virus to be brought into the world I'm no scientist by any means but from what we've seen on the news and what we're understanding and although many people have different theories it's believed that it came when went from one animal to another and um, Usually these kind of coronaviruses would just stay within animals, but uh, for whatever reason, this um, particular virus was able to go into humans. If you think of uh, where this location was and where the outbreak first started, was at a market, and again, there were hundreds of people there, and the platform that the virus was given was a perfect storm because it was um, people were able to transmit it so easily and um, it seems that um, this virus um, is very easy to catch and it can spread very quickly and um, it's a very unfortunate thing for us but you just think of the conditions all of it is the perfect storm that this virus was able to come into existence and then just spread 
like wildfire. Uh, that's what we're thinking about here when we think about the perfect storm. Now, let me just um, emphasize this and make sure people don't misunderstand me. I'm not doing the blame game by any means. I'm not pointing the finger, you know, at any person or any type of or group of people. I'm just simply wanting us to understand basically how um, this virus came about and how it was given a platform basically to come about very easily and then to spread very quickly uh, into the world. Before we knew it, when we get into February, we were already hearing cases about it coming into France and then uh, into Italy, Germany, and then it just seems to get closer and cr closer. And I can, I think I can remember the day when someone said, it's in Torvine, it's in Pontypool, just getting closer and closer. As we have, uh, as we reflect and think back now, we've been in this lockdown situation for almost 12 weeks now. And, um, we saw the numbers um, just shooting up when the death rate was so high at 900 odd something a day. And now, um, three months later, because of the lockdown situation and the social distancing measures that have been put in place, we have been able to reduce the R rate down to such an extent that, um, you know, praise God, we only saw something like 33 deaths in all of the UK the other week, I believe it was. And we know, of course, that each death is tragic. But we are seeing that downward spiral. However, the main uh, focus of this talk today is really continuing to think about the perfect storm. Not just the way with the virus came into existence, but how we might be entering perfect storms from our surroundings and our environments. It basically, um, as you know, we've been asked to stay at home as much as possible. For some people, that means that... Um, They've had letters off their doctors that they cannot go out at all, known as you know shielding, because their health is going to be so at risk if they were to go out. Whereas other people who don't have um, so many or maybe not any underlying health conditions uh, can go out within certain uh, restrictions. Uh, really, you know, whether that be shopping or an exercise or having to help uh, a helping hand with family members, and so. Some of us have been able to enjoy the outdoor environment to, to such an extent. But it really got me thinking of, um, as you know, I've preached and talked a lot about human emotions in my last couple of videos. And uh, for me, this topic is really important because um, for us who have had to stay at home uh, for a long period of time with maybe not much exposure to the outdoor environment. When we have, uh, when we're stuck with negative thoughts, negative feelings, if we're not able to control them, and if we're not able to sort of um, deal with them in a responsible manner or in an integral way, and we allow all these other things to come into our minds, we are then allowing the perfect storm into our lives because um, being stuck at home and we're very vulnerable at the moment, you know, a lot of us have worry, distress, maybe frustration, anger over all these different things. If we allow it to come into our minds and if we allow it to shadow our perspective of the present situation and also the future, we've created the perfect storm and we've created a path for ourselves that um, will lead down a path of, it could be any emotion, couldn't it? Like I've mentioned, distress, anxiety, hatred, anger, frustration, boredom even. We've got to really bring these things to the Lord and we have to really um, pray about how we're going to uh, handle them. Because I've mentioned in other videos, it's normal to receive these emotions but I think it's what we do with it is um, the next part in the process, really. And also, we've heard about some awful, terrible cases about e people even turning to suicide in a time like this. You know, there must have been such an awful, dark period of time for them. Um, you can understand what I mean when we need to um, really control our feelings at the moment and not create or not allow the perfect storm uh, to come into our lives where we've given a platform um, to allow the environment around us to really overtake our lives in powerful ways. So we have to think about this very carefully.
So um, I just want to sort of maybe focus on just a couple of emotions today, really. There's probably so much I could say, but um, I just want to narrow it down to the couple, uh, to a couple of emotions, and um, I'll, I'll, I'll do this because it's been quite personal. You know, these have been some of the emotions I've been struggling with, and maybe you've been going through the exact same thing. And then we will relate this back to the text that we just uh, read a moment ago. So let's think about some different emotions that um, we may be allowing a perfect storm if we don't handle them care carefully. The first one, I think, really, that um, might be something that everyone is struggling with at the moment is boredom. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest about it. I think we have. Uh, I mean, I know I, I have. You know, some people have been able to work from home. Uh, but for other people, they can't. They, you know, their job demands of them physically, so they have to go in. Uh, that's one way they may been able to um, get out, out of the house, I suppose. I, I find for me, I'm sort of a creative person, and I like to keep myself occupied. I know other people may not function that way, and that's absolutely fine. But I know for me, I've had to really find ways to sort of discipline myself and. Um, find things to do almost if that means housework um but you know there's also the other side of that where people may be bombarded with absolutely loads of things to do as, as a parent as well i know how difficult it can be with lockdown having children of a young age i, I you know i totally understand that uh, people might be really struggling with that and so maybe it's not just boredom, but I think it's perhaps frustration as well that um, when you're inside for so long, you really can't, we, we say going crazy, but, um, you know, we really can sort of um, begin to behave in ways that we normally wouldn't because um, the situations around us have changed so much. And um, I suppose... I've opened a big hole here because I don't have, you know, all the answers, but I suppose me just wanting to identify and sort of acknowledge the different aspects of of what lockdown can bring, really. And so I just hope and pray that, as you, that you'll know that if you're struggling with this, you know, know that you're not alone. You can call someone, you can have someone to help you as you're going through this time of frustration, maybe restlessness. Um, and all these different kinds of feelings that you may be going through. I think the biggest one, and um, I think for me, this has been a hard one, is anger. You know, being angry at, um, you know, I mentioned in the beginning, I'm not blaming a certain group of people or a certain individual, but um, we do have those feelings sometimes of being angry or wa wanting to find someone to blame. It's very easy to think that um, this has ruined our lives. It's ruined um, what we knew was comfortable. It's ruined what we knew anything of routine. And it has had to get us out of the mindset of thinking what is routine, what is normal, what is comfortable, because all of that, is out the window right now all of that is gone and although we do pray that we will return to some sort of normality we do have to acknowledge that we're going to live with change and uh, things not being quite the same as they were and it's almost it's like if we have to live with what going back to normal but also learning to live with the virus at the same time but the fact that we have to live with a virus in general is what sometimes gets me fired up and this is a hard emotion this is one you have to bring to the Lord and um, as some of you all know I spoke on this on my last short video and I, I suppose I just do want to emphasize it the point again really that um, something that really helped me to overcome this and it's not gone by any means but I really feel that it's in a better position than it was uh, what helped me was really thinking it through and narrowing down, okay, what am I actually angry at? Is it a person? Is it a system? Is it a uh, an event? Is it a policy? You know, that was really helpful for me, you know, breaking it down and uh, trying to pinpoint exactly what it was that was getting me frustrated. And it turns out that in the end, um, I 
it's impossible to do the blame game because where do you end, really? You know, you keep going far back. It's this person's fault. Well, not really, because that person is there because of this person or this person is there because of this system. And then when we start blaming systems, it just goes on and on and on. <clears throat> and I found for me, okay, I can keep being angry, but what good is it going to do? Who's going to hear it? And if anything, the only person's life it's destroying is my own. It only destroys you in the end. And we, we read about this so many times in the Proverbs, for example. You've created the perfect storm within yourself. And it is the storm inside you that's breaking you down. And I found for me, in the end, I've just got to let it go. I had to let it go. And it's tempting to want to bring it back sometimes. But it's amazing, actually, the release and the freedom you feel if you let go of some of these angry thoughts that you might be having because of the situation. So, although, remember what I've been talking about, the platform that you allow things to come in, or because of the environment, you if you bring them all together in the wrong way, the perfect storm will come. So, remember, always try to control them, and really bring these things to the Lord through prayer, by talking to other people, and don't allow the perfect storm to come in. It's okay to go through the storm and uh, struggle through the storm. But really, we're not going to live in the storm or embrace the storm. We need to ask the Lord to get us through it, to make it calm again. And then the last one, really, would be, um, I think, worry, distress, anxiety, all those kind of emotions that um, bring forth fear, being scared. And it's natural. What, you know, when people started finding out that this virus was deadly, it's, you know, we're bound to be scared. And this brings us back now to um, the story in the Bible. I just want to bring us back to that text because um, the disciples when they were in this boat and a storm was coming, they were absolutely terrified. They woke the Lord, who was sound asleep, very peacefully. Um, Lord, save us, we're going to drown. And uh, Jesus replied, you of little faith, why are you so afraid? Now, um, we, we may indeed ask the question, um, do we have lack of faith if we're afraid? If we have, uh, if we're scared of something or we have anxiety, does that mean we have not enough faith? Well, you remember I talked about bef before that um, we're human and uh, we're bound to have these reactions. Uh, does it mean that we've sinned because of that? No, not necessarily. I don't think. Um, I actually believe it's you know we get these emotions. But I believe it's the next step, really. It's how you deal with them is what may lead to um, a lack of faith, or it may lead to an abundance of faith, depending on uh, how you uh, deal with the situation, really. And it's also a reminder to know that we do not have to do it in our own strength. You know, we have the Lord by our side. But you, maybe in the in the text that we're looking at, you know, was Jesus expecting them to calm the storm? themselves that the disciples were going to do it um because he was asleep or maybe was jesus really challenging the disciples that um their fear had overwhelmed them so much to the point of death you know lord we're going to die don't you care save us however the main reason jesus said this and this is where you have to understand the context when we start relating Bible passages to our current situation. The reason Jesus rebuked them is because they they doubted, not so much um, doubting the Christian faith that we might do in daily base on a daily basis, say, but they were doubting the divinity of Christ. Because at the end, uh, the key bit here is at the end of the story, um, the men were amazed. What kind of man is this? Even the winds and the wind and the waves obey him. You know what kind of man is this? Um, at this point, they're still thinking he is just an ordinary man with some sort of magical powers, not realizing that he is the Son of God um, in the flesh. You know, manifested in physical flesh. So that is the reason why Jesus um, said. You have little faith. Now, if you relate this to what I just said earlier, does it mean that we have lack of faith when we're afraid and when we worry? No, 
Of course it doesn't. I think it's what it's how we deal with them and it's how we respond to them. Um, if we if we don't give them to the Lord, maybe that could be a sign of a lack of faith because we're wanting to trust in our own strength and not um, rely on the guidance of the Lord. But do not be um, discouraged, or you know, I don't want us to sort of start thinking in the way that um, the Lord has abandoned us or the Lord is not protecting us if we have these uh, emotions of fear. So uh, let that also uh, be an encouragement to you. Make sure you understand the, the um, what Jesus is saying here or what Jesus is really saying here. And then um, the other point I wanted to bring out in the story is, of course, that Jesus did indeed calm a physical storm. You know, the disciples were out in the boat and Jesus... Uh, calm the storm and a lot of preachers also like to spiritualize uh, this text which is you know sort of thinking about how the Lord calms the storms in our life and I think both ways of reading it is fine really because you know scripture is alive and active and it speaks to us in so many ways but um, are you in the storm at the moment are you going through it let the Lord be able to calm the storm in your life also, do not allow yourself to create the perfect storm by the environments around you because at the moment with lockdown and um, again, I'm not saying, uh, I'm not trying to blame the government by any means by putting us in lockdown. They've had to do this for a reason. But the implications of lockdown and if we allow our minds to have negative thoughts will bring about a perfect storm in our lives. And so let the Lord calm the storm for you. And as we read in that first prayer at the beginning, uh, the Lord is at the helm, uh, guiding us through the storm. In the exact same way, when we go through the dark valley, the shepherd um, with the rod and the staff is guiding us through the dark valley. And as we go through the storm, he is going to um, guide our path. And he is um, with us every step of the way. Well, to close, I'd like to um, share this thought with you by two readings. Uh, we read in the story that Jesus was asleep, which also is a symbol for um, the inner peace, I believe, that the Lord gives us. And I want to share two scriptures. The first is from Psalm 4, verse 8. In peace I will lie down and sleep, for you alone, Lord, make me dwell in safety. And then the second scripture is Proverbs 3, verse 24, and that says, when you lie down, you will not be afraid when you lie down, your sleep will be sweet. And we close by remembering that um, we need not to fear and that it is the Lord who will give us that inner peace uh, during the midst of this time. So may the Lord bless you and thank you very much for watching today. And uh, please stay safe and uh, we we'll hopefully see you very soon online.